Hey, it's Pastor Mike. Are you a Bible nerd like I am? <laughs> well, even if you're not, I know you're really going to love our podcast called Bible Threads with Dr. Bruce Becker. Bruce is a friend and a colleague at Time of Grace, and he's a great teacher of the Bible. In his podcast, he uncovers the threads that run through the scriptures from beginning to end, and I'm not exaggerating when he will help you dig deeper than ever before into God's Word. He's going to inspire you to live with greater confidence and joy as he does. So just search for Bible Threads wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Slavery is bad, but there's lots of slavery in the Bible, and God doesn't do anything about it. That was the question that recently came in at our church's Question and Answer Sunday. And it's a good one. It's a question that I asked as I started to read through the Bible for the very first time. We know the horrors of American slavery, the plantations, the people misusing and abusing the Bible. And yet, despite what we've seen, there's all kinds of mentions of slavery, Old Testament and New in this book, and God rarely seems to like flat out condemn it. So what's up with that? How can God be good if he turns a blind eye to slavery, which is so, so bad? I thought about this question. I recently watched a movie starring Will Smith. Uh, It's a story of that uh, classic picture. I'm not sure if you've seen it of a slave named Gordon, an enslaved man named Gordon, with just almost unbelievable scars down his back from where he was whipped. That picture, and you can Google it, is such a stark reminder of the horrors and the evil and the sinfulness of slavery. So how, 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 how can this be in this supposedly good book? Well, if you're the person who asked me this question, why doesn't God do anything about it? I would say you're, you're only about 25% right. Are there plenty of instances of slavery in this book? Yes. In fact, the New Testament book of Philemon is the Apostle Paul writing to a slave master about one of his runaway slaves. About half of the book of Exodus is about God's people enslaved in Egypt and he releases them from their master, a a very malicious man named Pharaoh. So true, there's lots of slavery in all different parts of the Bible. But here's what you should probably know. Uh, Many cases of slavery in the Bible are not at all like the slavery that happened here in America. Some people were taken slaves as captives of war. Uh, Others actually sold themselves into slavery to pay off debts. Uh, If my research is right, I think up to one half of major cities in the ancient world, like Corinth or Athens, were filled with slaves because a musician would have been a slave and a, a teacher would have been a slave. Uh, This relationship where, you know, you're going to take care of my physical needs and I'm going to work for you, uh, much of that fell under the umbrella of slavery in the ancient world. So you have to remember slavery that we think of wasn't exactly slavery like they thought of. We might think of a a boss and an employee, like I'm enslaved to this nine to five job. I, I have to come, not of my own free will, because you're paying me, you're taking care of me. That's almost in some instances a form of ancient slavery. So we can't deny some of it was wicked and evil and destructive and abusive, but also some of it was not. But that last line from the question, God doesn't do anything about it, just isn't biblically true. If you read the book of Exodus, for example, in their pain and misery, the slaves of Egypt cried out to God and he heard them and he rescued them. The word Exodus literally means a road out of. They exited Egypt because God was against that abusive, horrific slavery. Or think about this. In the book of Philemon, just one page in my Bible, one chapter, the Apostle Paul is writing uh, to this man named Philemon. He was a slave owner about this runaway slave named Onesimus. Onesimus had run to Paul and now Paul was going to send the slave back to his master. And listen to what he said to his master. Perhaps the reason Onesimus was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. Oh, forever slavery. That sounds bad. No, keep reading. You might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. It doesn't quite fit the narrative of race-based slavery, does it? The teachings like that from the Bible were really what undid the whole system. 
Once the impoverished were raised up by Jesus, once slave and master found equal identity at the cross, once humility got the last word and money mattered very little, once biblical principles took root, uh, slavery couldn't last forever. So, that question, is there slavery in the Bible? There is. Is it the same as the slavery we instinctively think of? Uh, Often not. Does God do anything about it? Ask the people of Egypt in the days of Moses. Ask Philemon and Onesimus and Paul. God and his love does much about it. I hope that helps you remember and not lose your faith when you find slavery in the Bible.